Check one, two, check, check. Can you guys hear me? This, oh my God, this was a fucking nightmare. Holy shit. All right, everybody, let's calm down. If you'll notice, I have potato quality um, video right now, but they always say audio is more important than video anyway. So uh, we're just going to have to, yeah, Wolfman, I, I was, I was, I'm never this late. And I got to tell you right now, it's a good thing that I did this stream because tomorrow night would have been a fucking disaster. Oh my God. I'm like, I'm, I'm, pumped. I'm like pissed right now. So let me get my bearings, but oh my, the, <laughs> we need to have a come to Jesus. Okay. This, this piece of shit right here. Hold on. Yeah, this this uh, this webcam right here. Uh, it's a Logitech. It worked fine last time, but uh, for some reason, I don't I don't know what the hell happened. But every time I would try to click on my webcam, nothing, nothing. And my uh, my brand new computer, it doesn't have an onboard webcam. You know, a lot of the newer computers these days they don't have an onboard webcam. So, I luckily I have my old computer. So I am literally back to the old computer right now streaming with you guys and um uh, wow man this <laughs> whoo it, it, i'm telling you it's a good to, to, so tomorrow i have to go out and i have to buy a new webcam i gotta find a new because i want to have good quality but i mean this ain't too bad right guys but i mean the the motion is kind of jacked up but uh wow let me let me turn on my fan i love you guys I, i'm sorry i'm so sorry Um, how are you guys doing today? It, it, it wasn't, um, yeah, I, th I just think my webcam went kaput. So I, I think I'm just going to have to go buy a new one. Uh, uh, and I, and I tested it out with Skype. I tested it out with OBS, both of them, nothing, nothing. So Jesus, 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 freaking insane. So now I got to like get my bearings back. Cause I'm, I'm going nuts trying to get this damn thing going. <laughs> Let me say hellos, okay? Let, let's try to let's see if we can keep this thing somewhat uh, as professional as possible, okay? Reggie Greg Blanchard, thank you so much. I'm still so excited for this. More Michael Myers. Good job with everything you do, y except for being late, okay? <laughs> like guys, I was scared. I was scared I was going to have to send out a message saying streams canceled. I can't. I can't. I have no video. I have no fucking video, right? Jesus, Jesse Taffer, Beth S. How are you doing? Uh, that's what dress rehearsal. Yeah, this is a dress rehearsal. Scott, Brandon, Byron Weaver, Brett, Horror Counselor, uh, The Slaughtered Lamb Movie Podcast, David, Cat David Catone, Juno, Felix, what's up, man? Jesse, Dino, uh, That Movie Nerd, Holly Klein, how are you doing? Jonathan Nichols, Scott Lauderdale. Um, I got a couple, couple new um, mods, too. You'll see Destiny. Everybody, congratulate Destiny. She is now an official mod. And uh, Chris is also a mod. And uh, my friend Panda Watch is going to be a mod. Um, but because um, I'm probably going to need some more mods for uh, for tomorrow. Because it, it's it's it, tomorrow. I don't know. I mean, tomorrow might be 20 people watching. Okay? I don't want to freaking toot my own horn. But it, it'll be fun, though. It'll be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. But, oh my God, can you guys imagine? Can you imagine if... Uh, I guess I could have made it work, but I just don't want to be late. And if I, can you imagine if I was 30 minutes late and I got freaking Dave McRae and, and Wolf and 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 uh, Jimmy Champagne and we watched the movie. And, you know, I got all those guys like, Lee, what the fuck? You know? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that at all. So, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I got new mods, so uh, watch your P's and Q's in there, guys. All right, they'll get you. They'll get you. So let, let me take a drink. Let me calm the fuck down. Let me tell you, this is a DD Live Extra, by the way, okay? So this will probably be like an hour. Um, I was going to do one of these last night. And, um, it, well, let's, 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 let's talk about how it all started, okay? Let's talk about how it started. And, you know, I thought... Um, you know, timing's everything with YouTube, right? And I was thinking, it's like getting our schedules together for Hollow Stream, 
And uh, once we finally decided to do it, um, luckily, because I was scared that there was nothing going to be going on uh, for Halloween. There was going to be like this um, this calm, I guess, before the storm. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't be as impactful. But then all of a sudden, um, we got this news about Halloween ends. Uh, we got the... Uh, the the magazine that just came out total film and the brand new images i mean this has been a good week for halloween kills news and halloween ends was what what we're gonna be talking about so you ask why are you doing this video this stream when you're doing hollow stream tomorrow night because it's gonna take me an hour just to talk about uh all that you know this stuff that i want to talk about with halloween ends this this bombshell because i don't want to spend an hour talking about that tomorrow night with uh with the other guys because i already have a jam-packed schedule of stuff we want to talk about we're going to have to get super chats we're going to have to get uh some questions that i posted on twitter a lot of crazy stuff right so um but how this whole thing started for me anyway was sean from fandom empire me and sean text each other back and or dm each other back and forth from time to time and um Sean did me and he was like, dude, uh, I got some big news. And I was like, big news? Yeah. And he's like, in, in, I, I don't, I'm paraphrasing, but he was basically saying, I got big news. Uh, are you ready for this? And I was like, yeah, hit me with it. And so, you know how you, sometimes you, you answer and then you go back to doing your thing and whatever. And then you come back to the DM. Well, I came back to the YouTube and I saw that Sean was already on, on, um, on YouTube uh, doing a stream. And uh, he was talking about what he was about to tell me. And that was that Halloween ends no longer is set on the same night as Halloween Kills and Halloween 2018. And I, you know, I, I, I literally, not really suspicions, but I kind of just kind of pondered in my head, um, like, what would it be like if they actually did Halloween ends on a different night? And also... Could this COVID thing affect um, the the script? Like, could, could they change the script based around what happened with COVID? Because they were supposed to shoot Halloween Ends um, last year, but because of COVID, they, they you know they didn't shoot. And so, I, in my head, long before all this, I was just, not to give myself credit or anything. This is just my thought process. But I was just thinking, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up changing the script. Now, did did I think in my mind that they would push Halloween ends um, back a few years as far as like the timeline? No, I don't think I was thinking that. But I was definitely thinking we could probably see some changes in the script just based on um, people's shooting schedules and. Uh, you could have an actor or an actress um, come back in a couple years and we're supposed to make them look like they're on the same night. And sometimes that can be difficult. You know, that can be difficult. So they might change the script accordingly. So that way when you're watching the movie, you don't think... Uh, I'm not sure if I'm buying that that's um, Alice, especially the younger actors. I'm not sure if I'm buying that's Allison or that's Cameron on the same night because they look a little different. And um, it kind of reminds me of old. <laughs> I was I just watched old, um, but yeah. So I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised this is happening. And it, it and I started thinking, what are the possibilities of this? You know. And so I came up with like uh, five different possibilities uh, that could come from uh, Halloween ends taking place a few years. And uh, by the way, before we dive into this, too, what's up, Frank Racker? How you doing, brother? Byron Weaver, what's up, Byron? How you doing, man? Okay, Jim Frank, man. <laughs> Frank showed up at the right time when when uh, the sky wasn't falling. Okay, because if Frank showed up earlier, he might have seen that I was like freaking the fuck out. So if you if you showed up just now, you're good. That, that good for you because you had to you avoided all the uh, me me freaking out. You know, uh, and starting. What did I start? Start like I said, short. What did I start like? Twenty minutes late. I li I literally thought I was. I was like, damn, I'm not gonna be able to stream tonight. Luckily, I still have my old computer. It's working fine, right, guys? We're rolling. We're fine. And it just looks. Just let's act like I have the power of the Flash, okay? And I'm so fast that my so my camera is actually 4K, 
but I'm so damn fast that it, it still can't keep up. Look, like my hand is literally going like a, a thousand miles per hour right now. But yeah. Um, since we're bullshitting, um, have any of you guys seen old and more importantly, have any of you guys seen, um, escape room two? <laughs> I literally just got back from seeing escape room two, uh, right before this, right before this, like I got home, I had to start putting this thing together, throwing some slides together, putting that thumb, that thumbnail together. And I walked out of Escape Room 2 and I was thinking, oh my God. Like, there's there's bad movies and then there's Escape Room 2, okay? Uh, like, I was just blown away by how horrible Escape Room... Like, Escape Room 1 is... You know, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a popcorn horror movie, Escape Room 1. And it's fun for what it is, okay? It's cool that everybody's in this room and they don't know what they're there for and they end up going through all these escape rooms. Um, but Escape Room 2, it hits the ground running and it never stops. But I mean that in the worst way possible because you don't get a chance to really get to know anybody. They don't do any kind of building of the actual um, danger. You, because you know, like Michael Myers, there's an example. They spend time building this killer, uh, building the mystique of Myers, and by the time we see him, by the time we see him walking out of the shadows, we're like, "Holy shit, this guy is not to be fucked with." And and you you know, insert slasher killer here, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, especially. That is a beautiful job of building uh, a threat, a killer, whatever. Escape Room 2 is absolute died in the wool um horse shit. It's it's so freaking bad. Like it's so bad that it's it's one of those it's almost so bad that you're like having fun cuz it's like it's too easy to make fun of. It's too I didn't expect Escape Room 2 to be that fucking bad. Like wow. It was it, it like when I got done with it I was cuz my wife was like are you going to are you going to sit down and review those? You're going to record tonight? And I was like, no, there's a lot of... I mean, Halloween Kills is going crazy right now. I meant to stream last night. Let's do it tonight. I had to, So I, I put aside my old review and my um, Escape Room 2 reviews just so I could do this with you guys. And then I got uh, the stream tomorrow night. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> but the one thing that, that uh, Escape Room 2 taught me Sometimes it takes a really, 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 really shitty bad movie to make you realize that there's some... Um, the movies that you think aren't that bad are actually pretty bad because old looks like... Uh, everybody says Citizen Kane, okay? Um, let's say old looks like The Exorcist compared to Escape Room 2. And when I walked out of old, my head hurt and I was just like... How did I feel about that? It's just... Like, there's problems with old. Like, right now, I'll tell you, I'll give old, like, a three, maybe three and a half out of five. Um, there's some excellent, excellent direction in that movie. And uh, it can make your brain hurt a little bit, though. Uh, but M. Night, man, he... Say what you want about the guy, but I think he's... I think he's he's a great director, you know? Sometimes it doesn't land. Like, this isn't Signs and this isn't Sixth Sense, Okay? Um, but this is M. Night Shyamalan, okay? Take that forever, you know, however you will. This is definitely M. Night Shyamalan, and he, he's one of the top directors out there, I think. You know, he knows what he wants in the camera, and he does a damn good job of making it happen. There are some camera movements in this movie that are pretty damn awesome. Like, like you can, like, it's just very professional, you know? And there's some character moments that are kind of heartbreaking, but, um, uh, it's there's something missing from the movie that you don't like i think it's you know how you walk out of a movie and you're just like fist pumping and you're like yes that was great i had such a great time you don't do that with old uh you, you've definitely had an experience okay and i guess i'll break it down when i when i finally do sit down and review it but escape room 2 made me realize that old is actually a pretty decent movie <laughs> a pretty decent movie 
Um, what is today? Is today Friday? Yeah, today's Friday. How's you guys' Friday going? Are, are you having a good time? Let me take a drink of water. Um, I had a birthday the other day. Um, and I did a, a, an unbox video. Thank you guys so much for the nice presents. But the funny thing is, just today, the the next horror pack gets... I'm looking at it right now. The horror pack, it came in the mail. So... I guess if I have time at the end of this, maybe I'll just open up that. If you guys want, I'll open up that the the new horror pack and I'll just show it on here because I don't think I'm gonna do. Because I would have to wait like another month, so I don't know. Uh, it best is it was hot as hell today, swimming in vomit. Jesse said, uh, "Sounds like my experience seeing mother in the theater with my sister. It's been awesome. Um, I'm glad I don't have to work tomorrow, Taffer." Yeah, yeah, it has been hot. Like, it's been humid. Like, today, I was just, it was humid as fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, all right. So, anyway, let's get into, I guess, this this Halloween news, and I'll talk about my my five possibilities that I think could come out of this. This, this you know, this is just speculation on my part, okay? But, uh, yeah, just to recap, um, David Gordon Green stated recently that Halloween Ends takes place a few years after uh, Halloween Kills. I don't know the exact number of years. I just know that it doesn't take place on the same night. Um, which is kind of... It, it's it's kind of, it's a good thing and a bad thing. But um, I always had my reservations um, with having three movies in a single night. Like, guys, is... Is there another case of a trilogy that all happened on the same night? I can't think of any. This would be the first. So, um, it's a lot to cram into one night. And there's certain predictabilities about having movies that happen in the same night. Because you know certain characters are going are going to, I guess, look the same. Uh, they're going to be wearing the same clothes. Um, I don't know. So certain characters might not... Like the, some of the surprises are not going to be there because it's all in the same night, and, and if it's a core character, you know that they're probably not going to die in the first movie. You know, um, unless they market it as such that Drew Barrymore is the main character of the movie, which was genius about Scream. They did before Scream came out. You felt like Drew Barrymore was going to be the main character, kind of. Um, so it, it all comes down to the marketing too. Is the Hobbit in the? I don't. I don't know. I was thinking about Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit as well, Frank. But I don't know if Hobbit, the Hobbit, takes place on the same day, though. I don't. Plus all that traveling and everything. No, I, I, I'm sure it doesn't. So, um, Reggie Greg Blanchard says, "I hope Lindsay doesn't die too fast." Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Me too. That's the one character that I'm. I'm probably the most excited about Lindsay Wallace over any other character. Which, hey, and that's a question for you guys. Which character are you guys looking forward to the most in uh, Halloween Kills and Ends, if you want? You know? Just because we've seen Tommy uh, a couple times. Let's see, we saw him in Halloween 6. We didn't see it. Did we? No, we didn't see him in Halloween 2, 3, 4. Wasn't Tommy? Tommy was actually in 4. He, he was in the, uh, the hardware store. He was like friends with Brady, but they never actually say Tommy. But I think they said in the script he was he was supposed to be Tommy Doyle. But um, yeah, maybe it is just Halloween Six that he was in. Halloween Six and the first. Uh, and, oh yeah, and Rob Zombie's Halloween, of course, he was in that too. But I mean, Lindsay Wallace, you know, and having the same actress that plays her in the first movie come back—that's pretty damn exciting, actually. That's pretty damn exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So. Uh, Ebert, what's up, man? He says, I want to see how they address or feature Loomis. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what they do with Loomis. Um, that's enough, just as far as like scenes go and sequences go. Yeah, that flashback scene. Uh, so looking forward to that. So looking forward to that. When is it going to happen? Is it going to be at the beginning of the movie? Uh, is it going to be at the end of the Who knows? Who knows? It's going to be fun. Uh, one other thing. I was going to put this on my list of five possibilities, but then... I think, 
I think Halloween Kills was our. I don't think Halloween. I don't think David Gordon Green and company went back and did any kind of reshoots to Halloween Kills. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chet, but I don't think they did. I think they're sticking with what you know what they finished. You know, they might have done some some little reshoots like way back before COVID, but post COVID reshoots for Kills, I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. Uh, which which would have been interesting too because what if they did do research for kills uh, reshoots because of ends taking place a few years later so now they got to change the ending of kills to make it more um impactful which that is that is one of the possibilities see i just gave away one of the possibilities <laughs> okay yeah um okay let's let's jump into this let's jump into this all right. Um, now, did I did I let me go to my topics over here? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you like my first reason? <laughs> it could royally suck. <laughs> it's true though. It could. You know. I mean, because they they had an idea for it to take place on the same night, and. I don't know when you when you are for like what if that idea was like the most amazing idea possible you know and then you can't do that anymore unless it's just one little quick fine tune but I don't think it is if you're going forward a few years um I'm, I'm thinking you got to change that script maybe substantially you know I mean because you have characters that are older and uh, I don't want to bleed into because there's some other reasons here too that I don't want to bleed into. But you know, getting right down to it, it could really suck. Let me answer this super chat real quick. Um, Reggie says uh, I can't wait to see how Karen got the mask from Michael to taunt him uh, with. Like, what situation would lead to Michael getting his mask snatched off? Well, it seems like it took place at the Myers house. Maybe there was some kind of scuffle or something like that. And um, I don't know. Maybe Karen got, or maybe it was on the ground, and Karen saw it and picked it up and said, "Come and, come, you know, come and get me, motherfucker." Something like that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, yeah. Continuing my thought on on this though, I am scared because I was thinking of like Matrix Revolutions, and, and I don't think Revolutions is like horrible, but I think compared to the first two movies, especially the first movie. Matrix Revolution is just, just like, it's just, it felt so bloated. It, it's just too much, you know? And, and I don't think Matrix Revolutions leaves as much of a mark. Whereas the first movie is just completely awesome in every way possible. Perfect script. Uh, the second movie, Matrix Reloaded, has moments, has some fun moments, you know? But I don't even, I think even the second movie is not nearly as bad as Revolutions. That's what I'm afraid of with uh, with this. I'm afraid that what if Kills is this, uh, you know, just like one of the best slashers ever. I mean, because people are building this movie up like it's going to be completely amazing and insane. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you go out of a movie on such a high like that, it's like almost impossible to maintain um, that level of quality. I can give you a couple of examples right now that are arguable. Um, um, Return of the Jedi. There are things about Return of the Jedi that are great, but I don't think Return of the Jedi is nearly as perfect as Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back is perfection in every way. It's one of the greatest films ever made in my book. And so I think it was satisfying, Return of the Jedi, but it's, it's nowhere, in my opinion, nowhere near the level of Empire Strikes Back. And sometimes that alone can affect your opinion on the third movie, you know? You're always like, yeah, Return of the Jedi is really good, but damn, there's Empire right there. You know, Empire's always right there in your uh, in your rear view, and it's, it almost leaves a stain on the third movie. By this going forward a few more years, I think that even hurts it even more. Possibly, it could possibly even hurt it anymore. And let me know, let me know your thoughts on these particular possibilities as I'm going. Do you think I'm full of shit? Do you th- do you think no? There's no way this is gonna suck. I still think just because it doesn't happen on the same night, it, it's still it's still gonna be awesome. You know, I, I'm not worried about this particular possibility. 
Because I, I like to hear from you guys too. I like to hear your opinions. Okay. Um. Okay. Let me see. Do I have any other thoughts about it could royally suck? What else could suck about um, Halloween ends? Because it takes place uh, a few years down the line. You know, uh, and, and this kind of ties into what I just said, but it's just that that steam, that losing steam factor. You know, all that awesome stuff happened a few years ago, and now we got to pick back up steam and we got to try to rebuild that. You know, whereas uh, a jumping off point, like this, is something I didn't even put in the possibilities. But the beginning of Halloween ends. You know, uh, it would be better. Or I think your chances of the movie being um, better are, you know, jumping off like like shot out of a cannon. Because that's pretty much what the end of Halloween Kills is probably going to be if ends takes place on the same night. It's like, you know, boom, we're, we're, we're still going. We're still going 90 miles an hour. I'm not saying there's gonna, they're, they're not going to take breaks and have character moments and all that stuff. But it's just more fluid when it all takes place on the same exact night. You know, and like I said, I've had my reservations about three movies on the same night, but there's also high, high pros about taking place on the same night because you don't lose that steam, you don't lose that edge, you know, that anything can happen factor is still there. Um, uh, it makes me think that Lori will die and kills Taffer. I guess I could see how you could come to that. Like, I was almost thinking the opposite. I was thinking that Lori will not die in kills. And so then we got to pick up a few years later. And what's Lori Strode? You know, because we've already done that, too. We've already seen what Lori Strode's condition is 40 years later after the first movie. That's That was the point of Halloween 2018. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll get to the pros, though. I definitely have some pros about this in the character department uh, with this change. Okay? So... I think we've covered enough as far as like it could royally suck. Okay. All right. Next one. Next one. Okay. This is a good thing. This is a this is a good possibility. If this takes place a few years later, then this could mean that Halloween Kills ending is more impactful. Um, and this kind of ties into what I was saying earlier about, you know, what if they did reshoots for Halloween Kills? Um, and the only reason I think they would do reshoots is for the ending of the movie because this movie takes place a few years later. Let's beef up the ending of Kills now because now that we know that this takes place a few years later, let's give them something that's just like massive, you know, at the end of this movie that makes them say, okay, I know this movie takes place a few years later, but goddamn, I can't wait to see how this all, you know, and somehow story-wise make the stakes still so high that, that it looms in the air, uh, you know, a few years down the line. And so, and so, so much so that you can't wait for it to pick back up again, you know, because it, it like, it could permeate, you know, it can permeate for years. And so when it does pick back up, you're like, oh shit, here we go. You know? And I don't know what that, you know, that could be, uh, Myers just, you know, at the end of kills, he vanishes and he vanishes, um, in a situation that, you know, oh my God, if we lose him, we're fucked because we're, we've worked so hard to capture this motherfucker. We got all the people, all the all the Haddonfield uh town folk to, you know, they've come together and we want to we want to just, you know, completely end him, end this evil. And what happens, you know, they're they're like he's right there, he's in our grass and then boom, he's gone. You know, he's gone at the end of the kills. So th if that happens, then that could really uh boost up the next movie, I think. I think. Um uh, if Lori survives, I riot. Franco. Yeah, Franco yeah, Franco probably knows my opinion on Lori Strode. No disrespect to Jamie Lee Curtis. She is a, a legend. Uh, God bless her. She's, a, she's a, a scream queen. But this character, I think, has had just, you know, she's had her run multiple times in multiple timelines. Um, 
I don't know. Let's end this madness. Let's let's end this madness. But that's just me. That's me me being uh, selfish about the matter. If this was my Halloween movie, I, I'd I'd move on to something different. And because a lot of people say the best movies are with Laurie Strode, but I kind of disagree. Four and six are two of my favorite movies in the franchise, and no Laurie Laurie Strode to be to be found. I kind of like the idea that Laurie Strode exists in the universe, but she's not there. She's dead, and so the effect that that has on her children. Jamie Lloyd, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why Halloween Four works so well is because, you know, Jamie Lloyd was this just completely broken child because her mother was dead, and I love Jamie Lloyd as a character. I do, um, you know, and recently with the the whole uh, Tony Moran dust up that just happened, and a, a lot of people were quick to jump on Danielle Harris, um, but you know what? It takes balls, and I'm not going to talk too much about this situation, but I think it takes balls to pretty much go into a fire because that's what Tony Moran is to the to the whore community. He, like, if you go and even, like, you, you know, look like you're defending this guy, you're going to get a lot of backlash, and boy, did I see it. I saw a lot of people saying, ban Danielle Harris, you know, but her mindset was, I don't care about what he did. I just care about his well-being. I want to make sure this guy's okay. Uh, you know, and, and once she did, and Dave made his his video about, you know, the the uh, the possible questions that maybe should be asked, Daniel Harris, you know, she saw that video and she jumped forward and she was like, yeah, you're right. I should have asked those questions. And uh, she did. She ended up doing another interview with him. And I think the situation's a little bit better now. I, I do. It, it, it doesn't excuse what he did. But I think it just shines a light on, you know, I don't care what you did. Somebody's well-being, I mean, we might not have him here anymore. You know, somebody, it, this this shit can cause people to freaking take their own lives. It can. So she was just worried about his well-being. So I got off on a rant here. Sorry. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, what was I, I was going to say that uh, Daniel Harris stated that she's never met Jamie Lee Curtis in person. And she's, uh, she said she's always wanted to meet her. And, and uh. I think it would be so cool if those two characters actually had a moment together, you know, Jamie Lloyd and um, Laurie Strode. And I, I'm sure Jamie Lloyd would be furious with her. You know, why did you leave me? You know, why weren't you there for me? Um, yeah, I mean, the possibilities in that scene alone, I think, could be amazing, amazing. And I'm surprised more people don't jump at that idea. You know, can you imagine, like, this is your daughter who you faked your own death, you left. And this is a ch this is a chance for a really emotional, intense, dramatic moment between these two characters. And then, oh, by the way, we have Michael Myers in the picture. I get chill bumps just saying it out loud. It, it, so it, it it drives me crazy that people don't realize how big that that scene could be. It could be amazing. Okay. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Um, number three. Oh, this is a this is a big possibility. A more spaced out finale. And this is pretty self-explanatory, right, guys? If um, if Halloween ends doesn't take place on the same night, and, and by the same night you know that you're only getting a couple hours. It's almost like the show 24. Have you guys seen the show, show 24? Every episode is within a one-hour space. Uh, it's not exactly that, but it's pretty damn close. Um, by this happening a few years down the road, it opens up uh, it opens up that space for a lot more possibilities. You know, time time wise. You know, because this this could take place over. It'll probably it's going to take place over one night. I mean, that's the kind of the the gimmick with Halloween movies anyway. They always take place on Halloween night. So you're still going to get um, an end over one night, maybe two, I'm thinking. Like, let's think back. Are there any Halloween movies that take place over the, the span of more than two days? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think most of them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Listen, Halloween 1 is two days. Halloween 2 is the same night. Uh, we're not counting Halloween 3. Halloween 4 is two days. Five is, uh, yeah, because it's the next year, so that's two days. Six is two days. 
Um, H2O, same thing. Yeah, pretty much all of them, I think, are like that. So even though this takes place a couple years down the line, you're still getting a pretty... Um, um, you know, you're still getting a compressed environment. You know, you're still getting, uh, you know, over the course of a night or two nights. So that doesn't really bother me, you know, but at least you get 24, 48 hours to kind of build your story along, you know, uh, he's back. Let's build this, build this case or, you know, um, I mean, if it's, if it's a few years down the line, it pretty much has to be that Myers has escaped. You're right? I mean, am I wrong? I can't. Or or he's caught at the end of Halloween Kills. And so then he escapes again. But I don't know if they want to do that. You know, because he's already done. He's already escaped. So, I don't know. This, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but this sounds like he escapes at the end of Kills. You know, I think that's your logical conclusion. So... Justin, all right, I got a disagreement. Sweet. All right, here we go. He says, uh, I'm going to have to disagree that Empire Strikes Back is better than Return of the Jedi, especially with CGI. There's no CGI in either one of those movies. Um, right, let me think. Hold on. Oh, you're talking about the special editions. You're talking about the special editions. Um, yeah, no, no way in hell. I, I don't like Ewoks, okay? Um, I don't hate Ewoks. But, no, I think Empire Strikes Back is a much better movie, you know, M- much better paced, uh, the stakes are so high, um, it's a very serious movie, it's much more serious than um, the previous movie, which is great, A New Hope, this is, you know, it's, the stakes are really high, and you have some light moments here and there, you know, that, that's, that, that sexual tension between Han Solo and Princess Leia, and that's enough. That's all you need. But in Return of the Jedi, it's because it bounces from storyline to storyline because you got uh, Han and Leia with the Ewoks. To me, a lot of that stuff's pretty silly. You know, it's the it's the um, Luke and Vader stuff that's like top notch in Return of the Jedi. Thank God for that stuff. Uh, you know, that finale is amazing. I'll give you that. But I think overall, Empire is definitely the better movie. Ewok lives matter. <laughs> right, right, Beth? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hey, Lee, is uh, Hallow Stream still happening tomorrow? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I'm going to get a webcam tomorrow, a good webcam. I mean, if I had to use this, I guess I would use this. But no, I, yeah, it's definitely happening. It's definitely. I'm glad I did this tonight because, oh, my God, tomorrow would have been a, a nightmare. A nightmare. George says it could be a Halloween 4 ending. Um, hold on. Yeah, here we go. Uh, George says it could be... Uh, thanks for the uh, the thought, though, Justin. Um, George says it could be a Halloween 4 ending where Michael dies, his body is left, and they don't notice uh, he could be alive, or maybe not. Hmm, let me think about that. Because remember at Halloween 4, he was shot down the shaft, and then right at the beginning of 5... Uh, he comes out of the shaft in that ravine and he does that uh, that, that breakdancing spin in the water and then rolls down. I like that scene, actually. I love the beginning of Halloween 5. I think Halloween 5 starts off with a bang. Um, it kind of sucks that, you know, he um, he's caught by the hermit and then he's just, I guess he's just taken care of for the, for the year. I don't know. Um... Answer me that, uh, guys. Um, do you think would you rather part five taking place on the same night, or does it, like does it bother you that it took place a year later? Um, I, I still love five. I do like it's one of those movies. Like I used to really not like that movie, and I still see the faults in it. But man, I ha- I have some good times with it. I do. What's up, David? David Santa Carla. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. That's a good thought, though, George. So your your question was though, if he dies and his body is left, and they don't notice, he could be alive or maybe not. Um, what? Where would his body be left though? If his body is left and they don't notice, he could be alive. So you're thinking that they would think he's dead. But if they think he's dead, then they're gonna bury the guy, right? I don't know. I, I think if Myers is dead though, they're gonna freaking incinerate him. Like, you know, right there on the spot. I don't know. 
They're going to probably stick a, uh, a, a stick of dynamite up his ass and blow it up. That's what I'm thinking. That would be that would be the first thing I would do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, more spaced out finale. Um, uh, a, a better chance to build build some characters and uh, uh, raise the stakes, build the tension. You got more time to do that, you know. Um, Ebert says five has its moments for sure. Yep. Uh, the horror counselor says throughout the two to four years. Damn it! Hold on. Let me. I lost it. Shit. Um, where'd it go? See, uh, when I'm using this OBS Live, I can't. Scroll, it won't let me scroll up. Let me see. Can I? No, it won't. It won't let me. Okay. Because I was gonna read that comment. Oh well. I lost it. Okay. So uh, let's go to the next one. Number four. Number four. Number four. Um, characters change for the better or the worse. Um, if it's a few years later, we definitely got some some uh, characters that have been through some uh, some emotional damage. Okay. Whereas if you know if ends takes place on the same night, um, they're in the thick of it still. They don't really have time to process. You know. Whereas if it takes place a few years later. Um, there's there's a lot of time to process. Uh, they're changed, uh, probably for the worse. Like they're comp- they're on guard constantly. They're gonna need serious fucking therapy. And then you got the thought in your head like he's still out there. You know, if that's the route they're going. I mean, do that's an Earth question. Like, do at the end of Kills, does something happen that makes these characters think that Myers is gone? He's dead. Which that does sound kind of interesting. Like, what if they think he's gone, and then ends comes back. And they're like, oh, shit, you know? And there's this, like, realization that... Maybe that's the point where they realize um, th- this is somebody that is not human. Like like Luma say, he's not human. What, what what if that... You know, because they always got that in the back of their mind because they know, you know, he's fucking picking up a fireman um, uh, with that... Uh, w- whatever you call that, that, that weapon that the fireman uses. Yeah, he's literally picking them up. You know, he he definitely has some 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 uh, superhuman strength, but they're not one hundred percent sure. You know, but if he if they think he's dead and then he comes back, then you know they're like shit. We're not dealing with some because they don't have Loomis around to tell them all this stuff. You know, they got Lori, but Lori doesn't really tell them. Um, but actually, she does and and kills. I'm thinking out loud here, but in kills, she does say uh, he transcends. So maybe kills is where they start building that uh, the legend of of Myers and you know, the, uh, the supernatural abilities of Myers, which I've like, let me ask you guys this too. Cause I love asking you guys questions. I like hearing your, your, your thoughts. Uh, do you prefer a Myers that is supernatural or do you prefer uh, a, a more human Myers or do you even care? And, um, my, you know, my opinion might surprise you because I do prefer a supernatural Myers. That, that's the version of the character that scared the shit out of me, you know? Um, I mean, it goes back to the first movie when he... Because you never know. And then, and then when he falls from the balcony and Loomis looks down, and I think it's Loomis's reaction that that solidifies that he's something more than human. Because Loomis's reaction wasn't, um, oh, shit, he's gone. Like, this is straight out of Carpenter's mouth. Loomis's reaction was... I knew this would happen, you know? So Loomis always had that thought looming in his head that, yeah, Myers is not human. He's simple. And he even says that in the first movie a few times. He's evil. He's pure evil. So that's the that's the element of the character that's um, always stayed with me, you know? And I think that's why I love Myers so much. I think that's why he is my favorite killer, because I like that he's not human. He's supernatural, you know? Yeah, um, I prefer a demon Myers, Ray J, um, RJ. Uh, Supernatural just makes him more creepy. A nice mix, Destiny. Myers half and half. Dave, I see what Dave and Destiny are saying because it is kind of nice to not know for like he could be he could be supernatural, but maybe he's not. Maybe he's not. You know, I do I do like that too. I just don't like the idea that uh, you know, like in Halloween 2018 when Myers. Uh, goes to that uh, the island in her kitchen, and 
You can tell he's struggling, but he, he moves that island. This is a 60-year-old guy moving that island, which most 20-year-olds, I'm sorry, that fucker is literally bolted to the ground. I am a carpenter, trust me. You're not moving that island. He does it. So that alone, it puts that thought in your head. Like, I don't know if he is 100%, but yeah, he could definitely could be, okay? Because I'm a carpenter, and there's no fucking way he's moving an island. Uh Uh-uh, it ain't happening. And I think you pick up on these things, too, when you're in, a like, a career field like that, you know? When whatever they're... Like, if you're an electrician, you know, and you go to Halloween 4 and... uh, Bucky, you know, he's he's doing the electric and he throws Bucky over the <laughs> all, all the electricians in that. Yeah, he's fucking dead. <laughs> he's fucking dead. Yeah. But yeah, these these characters, they're 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 pretty uh screwed. They're going to be messed up. Big time. Big time messed up. And I think that presents a lot of cool opportunities for ends actually to explore that because you can explore it a little bit if the, if it's on the same night and i think they do some of that in kills but uh you don't get to go deep you know you don't get to go that deep uh he moved it with the help of viagra that would work that would work frank that is a strong it's a strong pill not that i know that <laughs> you see what you did frank you you freaking sneaky weasel <laughs> strong like bull <laughs> Oh, okay. Hey, I I did just turn 48. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we're, let's do the last possibility, okay? Last possibility. And you know what? I'll, I'll open that horror pack for you guys, all right? Here we go. Last possibility. Boom! It could be amazing! You see how we did that? We started it off with it could suck royally. And it could be amazing. So... Before I jump into what I think about It Could Be Amazing, I want to know from you guys, what do you think? Do do you think, because it takes place years down the line, do you think there's more of a chance for it to suck or more of a chance for it to be amazing and better than it taking place on the same night? I do tend to lean this direction. I always had my, uh, my concerns, I guess, about three movies taking place on the same night. It's not it's not an idea that really excited me that much. Two movies, that's great. Three movies, you're confined a little bit, you know? You're confined a little bit. So um Epic Zombie Killer, hey Lee, do you think Scream 2022 could be amazing? Absolutely. Yeah, why not, man? It's the unknown, you know, because uh Craven's not back. So, what is, you know, what does that mean? If you, this is the first time that a, a, another director or directors have uh, been behind the camera for uh, for Scream, so I'm actually really curious because they don't get me wrong. I I love Craven. Craven was a treasure, but Scream two and three sucked for me. Okay, two even I don't like two that much. One and four, those are my two favorites. Okay, um, uh, Ready or Not was awesome. You know, so those directors, I think, I think they picked the perfect directors to do to do screen for sure. But yeah, I am excited about the idea of kills taking place. I mean, of ends taking place a few years later because it could be, it could be really awesome. They could really go out with a bang. This could be, you know. They could introduce something that maybe they couldn't introduce if it did take place on the same night, you know? Possibilities. There's a lot more possibilities. Um, story-wise, even, you know? You could you could introduce new characters that maybe you couldn't introduce uh, on the same night, you know? Because that does throw a lot of wrenches in your plan when things happen on the same night. You know, certain things just can't happen because, uh, because you're confined. You know, so I like I like the pos- the, the possibilities. Jason Voorhees could show up. Who knows? You know, I guess he could show up and it ends anyway. God, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, Sons Geek. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Um, Wes Craven is in heaven right now, smoking a spl- 
spliff with Jesus watching Last House on the left. Jeez, can you imagine that? Wes Craven and Jesus watching Last House on the left. Oof. That's a that's a rough watch. It's an awkward watch. Jesus is like, damn, Wes, you made this. <laughs> Are you okay? I think Jesus will give Wes a hug after he watched Last House on the left. Uh, Brad, Fred, hey Brad, what's up, man? One of my newest patrons. Thank you, good sir. Nice to see you in here. Um, all right, man. I, 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 this has been fun because, I, like I said, I didn't think this was gonna happen. <laughs> it was. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? My my damn camera's not working." The day before, Hollow Stream kills. Thank God I did this, guys. Thank God I did this. Jesus. Like, wow. <laughs> um, let me see. Any any closing thoughts about how... Is it, like, you see, though, there's a lot of thoughts here that I definitely could not get out in the stream tomorrow night. Because tomorrow night's going to be more about just kills and, you know, getting the thoughts from all those other guys, you know? So, at least I could get all this out of my system and I could talk about it. So... Yeah, um, are you guys ready to do to do the uh, the whore pack real quick? Let, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Okay. CJ Kid, what's up, man? He says, "What horror icons would you pick to be in a phase one of a horror cinematic universe?" Um, you know, I never, I never really think about that. Uh, just because, I mean, so much can go wrong. And, and the, the fact that Freddy versus Jason worked somehow was almost a miracle. And especially with Myers for me, like Myers, I, just because of that world of Haddonfield and how sacred he is and his relationship to Loomis and all that stuff. I don't know, just the idea of putting him with, with Pinhead or with uh, Jason. I mean, it could be good, but um, I got I just have a feeling it would be horrible. Just horrible, you know? I, I, I think I tend to prefer my uh, my slasher killers alone in their own movies. Do you guys agree with that? Do you guys w Would you guys like to see slasher killers duke it out? Because I think you can go on YouTube and find that, and you can kind of see what the result would be, because it's usually just a... You know, some bad, like there's so many Michael versus Jason videos, and you could probably find a couple good ones on there, you know? Um, but I just don't know how that could pan out, like on a, an actual studio driven movie. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong, you know, but that's just, it's just not an idea that's ever excited me. You know, when they, when they announced that uh, Myers and Pinhead could, like they were, they almost were a go for Myers and Pinhead. And those two characters, I think, are the most likely. But what are they going to do? You know, because Pinhead, he, like, shoots chains out and shit. So how are they going to fight? You know, because Pinhead never even throws a punch. So I think it's better to, to, to leave them in their own worlds. Uh, I think it takes away from the mystique, the mystery, especially with Myers. Myers is one of the most mysterious horror characters uh, out of all the, uh, the killers. He really is. So, uh, and I think that would take something away from him if you did that. Um, Daniel, am I going to review old? I'm planning on reviewing it. Yeah, I'm definitely planning because I definitely have some thoughts. And I did talk briefly about it um, at the beginning of the stream. I talked about Escape Room 2, which I loved at the beginning of the stream too. I thought that was amazing. Escape Room 2, probably the best movie of 2021, if I had to put my money down. Sumney, what's up, man? Yeah, I, I highly recommend Escape Room 2, you know? I think Escape Room 2 is better than St. Maud. I think it's that good. Trina, what's up? How you doing? Right? There you go. Chucky versus Leprechaun. Now, there you talking. You can, you can do that all day, and I'd probably watch it and have a ball. You know? I guess it depends on the killer. Depends on the killer. Right? But, yeah. Yeah. It was so good. Okay. Um, horror Pack. This is my first live Horror Pack. Right? This is cool. First live Horror Pack. Wow. 
I'm opening it. I'm opening it up right now for you guys. Okay. Um, do any of you guys do horror pack? Do any of you guys subscribe to horror pack? My voice cracked. It's a, uh, it's a monthly DVD or Blu-ray service. If you don't know what horror pack is, they deliver movies right to your door for Blu-rays or DVDs. And, uh, there's always like, and I'm saying stuff that I say in my, my drum box video, but it, it, it's, uh, upper crust type stuff um indie type stuff uh there's always a limited edition sometimes you can find like steel books they'll, they'll give you steel books um oh i thought i saw a dvd but no it's all blu-ray okay so yeah but yeah here we go horror pack all right here we go first one okay oh jesus the horror counselor i'm not even gonna address that <laughs> although it is funny <laughs> okay like I, I I remember I was doing funnies the last ED Live, and I had a funny that was about it, it was it was about COVID, but it was a picture um that was so outrageous and so silly that I thought for sure there's no way that anybody's going to you know going to freak out about this picture, and of course they did, of course they did. And if you were here last week, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'll tell you, it was a bunch of people in the ocean. And they had their masks on. I don't care if you're for or against it. That's stupid. That's ridiculous. You don't go in the ocean with your mask on. What, what is that protecting you from? You know? Picture, and they literally, their mask was all wet all over their face. It was funny. It's, one guy had a like a, a plastic bag, Black Christmas style, all, wrapped around his own neck. And he's swimming in the ocean. Guys, if you don't think people are stupid, think again. There's a lot of stupid people in this world, okay? Okay. CJ Kidd. Um, uh, so does Michael eating dogs to survive a cannon? Uh, a cannon thing? Or was it only something in the first film? Don't rem Well, I mean, anything's... Like, if it's in the first film, then it's canon. Michael could still eat dogs, okay? Um... Chris Fold, he says, thanks for being pro-vaccine drums. My sister died in May of 2020, and I wish she had um, have had the chance to take it. She was 38 B safe. Oh, my God, man. I'm so sorry to hear that. So sorry. I'm, I'm definitely pro-vaccine. I am, you know? And I, it's a choice, and I don't push it on people. But, um, yeah. And, and you know what? If, if you want, I'll, I'll share a quick little story myself. Um. Uh, let's just say that a person, a friend of my wife's, um, her, she did not get the vaccine. I think, I don't know if she was planning on it, you know, cause sometimes we're just busy and we just don't get a chance to do it. So I don't know if she was planning on it or not, but she gave COVID to her father and her father died. And the, what that does to a person, like she's completely destroyed right now because of that because then you feel that guilt as well and then you, you feel that grief because you lost your father and her father was you know in his 50s that's like not that much older than me you know so it's it's serious when it, when it hits you that close to home then you start really thinking about it you know so yeah but um crease man i'm so sorry to hear that so sorry to hear that okay anyway first horror pack here we go okay first blu-ray Okay, this is, um, and hopefully you guys see it, Case 39 with Renee Zellweger. I have not seen this movie. Let me know if you guys have seen this movie. Case 39. Um, it, it's a it's a studio movie, okay? Is that, uh, is Bradley Cooper in that? That looks like Bradley Cooper, yeah. So I think Bradley Cooper's in it too. Yeah, yeah, Bradley Cooper, he's definitely in it. So uh, have any of you guys seen Case 39? Is it good? Let me know, let me know. Okay. Um, I'll definitely check it out. I'll tell you, there's one movie that I watched, and I'm going to show it to you right now, that I discovered through Horror Pack that I I loved it, but you, you, I could see how somebody would say it was horrible. Yeah, here you go. The, the This was in a, a Horror Pack from a couple years ago. She Kills. It was a Horror Pack limited edition. And this was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Uh, and you know how sometimes like really 
creative editing can make something really funny. And uh, actually, let me switch over here so that way you guys can see me better. But yeah, yeah, she kills. Um, it's horrible, but it's awesome. Okay, it's all and it's total. It's totally for horror fans for sure. Um, it's a revenge story. It's kind of a revenge comedy though, and you don't see too many rev uh, revenge comedies. So, yeah, man, get she kills if you get the chance. It's I tell you, it's a good movie to to smoke a blunt to watch. Like I, I guarantee, that like the the higher you are, then the 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 funnier it's gonna. Actually, it's already. I wasn't even high, and I was laughing my ass off. So, I don't know what I'm talking about. She kills. It's awesome. Okay, um, this one's got a slip cover. Anna and the Apocalypse. Okay, the Anna. So I'm giving you five movies instead of four. Anna and the Apocalypse. Another one that I've heard great things about. I have not seen this movie yet, so I'm happy to have it. Um, Chappie, what's up, man? How you doing? Yeah, let me know now. Have you have you guys seen Anna and the Apocalypse? Okay. Yeah. Still pissed off about my camera. Damn it. Uh, thank you. Forgot George's super chat. Thank you, Holly. Thank you so much, Holly. Let me see. Now I'm looking. He's the. Oh, oh yeah, okay, here we go. George, uh, imagine if Ends reveals this whole time Michael was a werewolf. <laughs> Thank God Holly told me about that one. Can you imagine, if, if I miss that, like, <laughs> yeah, like, what if he, what if they pull his mask off and he looks like Scott Howard from Teen Wolf? <laughs> and then they start playing the do 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 you're the big bad wolf eh, 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 eh. yeah <laughs> and then the uh the credits start rolling <laughs> oh my god this is interesting i'm looking at the next horror pack okay um scream test this is the horror pack limited edition look who's on the front tell me who that is guys <laughs> One of the sweetest horror celebrities I have ever, ever met. I mean, she is just an absolute sweetheart. Felissa Rose. Oh, my God. If you ever get the chance to meet Felissa Rose, she, first thing she does is makes you feel so comfortable. You don't get, you're not nervous around her at all, like, within five seconds of meeting her because she's, she, she gives you a hug. She's so inviting. And uh, she's just the sweetest, friendliest person you could ever meet. But she's got this movie here called Scream Test, which I've never heard of before. Um, yeah, <laughs> could be good. Could, could be completely horrible. Okay. Scream test. You know what? The, I like when you get movies, like where would you ever hear about this movie if it wasn't for horror pack? Right. That's what I love about this. You know, unless you're like checking, I don't know if it pops up on Instagram or Facebook, but I, I, there's no way in my life I would ever hear of scream test. If it wasn't for horror pack, there's no, well, no way in my life. I'd never hear of she kills. If it wasn't for Horror Pack. So, yeah. Yeah, Destiny met her. Isn't she great, Destiny? She's awesome. Okay, ooh, this is um, the last one. Last one. Here it is. Resident Evil Vendetta. It's an animated feature. And uh, I haven't seen any of the animated Resident Evil movies. Is that a newer movie? I can't read that. I, I can't read the date, but... I know they've had a couple of the, the Resident Evil movies uh, animated, but uh, an original CG motion picture. Okay. Uh, that guy on the top, and you probably can't make it out because of my shitty camera quality, but he looks kind of like uh, Abomination from The Incredible Hulk. And did you guys hear that Abomination's actually going to be in the, the, uh, the Ten Rings Shy Lin movie or something like that? Yeah. So awesome, awesome. Uh, Resident Evil Vendetta is great. It came out in 2017, only a few years ago. Okay, Horror Counselor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So that's it for the uh, the uh, Horror Pack. Um, and if you want to get a discount on Horror Pack, go to my last Unbox video. I have links uh, in the description. And if you click on that link, then I think you'll get like $5 off of your first month if you've never done it, okay? Uh, it's like, I think you can put in the code drumdums at the checkout 
and you'll get five dollars off so yeah um dave uh said or no uh metal metal devil says it's on netflix um i think he's talking about um resident evil uh vendetta so so anyway guys uh we i can't believe we, we did it we were able to get this thing going but um uh i'm glad we did this because now i know i gotta go shopping for another camera tomorrow um thank you guys so much for uh stopping by uh i hope my possibilities for halloweens uh maybe made you think about it a little bit you know um it definitely changes things you know the fact that this movie comes out um a couple years or the fact that it takes place a couple years later it definitely changes things around and it's interesting to me that Halloween Kills, they didn't go back and do any kind of reshoots to kind of match it up. So maybe they found a way to still do it and have... But Because Halloween Kills is supposed to end with enough space for Halloween ends. But I mean, if, if it ends at what? Like 3 a.m.? That's fine. Because if, if it ends at 3 a.m., then I was thinking Halloween ends probably ends at 5 a.m., you know? Or maybe Halloween's ends originally was going to take place during the day. Wouldn't that be horrible? I don't know yeah um yeah thank you Ali. i appreciate that always always a, a good time hanging out with you guys i'm always looking for an excuse to do so so it's really fun but uh guys make sure you stop by tomorrow uh for hollow stream kills uh it's gonna be two maybe three hours i don't know uh i got we're gonna have a jam-packed show it's gonna be a lot of fun this is something i do once a year i think the last hollow stream kills was last year uh i think april of 2020 so this is not something that happens that often this, and all together this is the sixth um hollow stream okay so again this is not something that is is a constant thing all right it happens when it needs to happen you know and uh it, it needed to happen it was getting close so amanda how are you doing i literally always see that you're streaming right at the well amanda i actually announced this one I, like an hour before i did it you know because I wanted to get something out about this Halloween ends news that I wasn't going to have time to cover tomorrow night. So I was able to do it. So, man, to make sure you go back and watch, you can see me uh, flip out. And uh, I'm losing my mind at the beginning of this stream uh, because of my camera. So it's it's entertaining. I think it's entertaining. All right. Um, um, some need has an interesting question. Hey, Lee, do you think they will ever make it clear what happens to Michael's parents in OG Halloween? No, I don't think it. I don't think it matters, you know, unless it unless it has something to do with what's going on now with with Lori and Allison and Karen. It doesn't need to be said. I don't. I don't think we're ever going to find out what happened to uh, his parents. You know, could happen, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. It's just not needed. You know, uh, when when you're doing a script for a movie, you want to make it tight, and anything that's not needed in there, you, you take it out of there. You know, especially when you're dealing with a movie that's a, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. You, you, in 2018 had a lot of meat in there. I'm not saying it's 2018 is perfect, but uh, it flies by. If anything, 2018, it really is one of the fastest moving Halloween movies out there. And it's one of the longest uh, time-wise. So, yeah. Tommy Doyle's big moment. Yes, Jesse. That's it. Very true. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap this up. I will see you guys all tomorrow night. Thank you so much for stopping in and supporting what I do. 